Hello and welcome, Shane Boyd. Hello, Amanda. How are you? I'm oh, really good, thank you. How are you? I'm really great, thanks. Yeah, oh, awesome. I'm so pleased to have you on the podcast this morning. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I feel very, um, uh, a lot of gratitude, actually. Oh, that's lovely. That's yeah. beautiful. Uh, well, allow me to introduce you properly. So Shane Boyd has a resilience, has been a resilience coach and entrepreneur for 25 years, having built, bought and sold numerous businesses in his time. Shane studied at the Coaching Institute of Melbourne. Shane's experience has come from being open to opportunity and taking risks. As a keynote speaker, Shane enjoys speaking to teenagers at Melbourne's most elite high schools. In this forum, he explains the importance of decision-making, particularly around drug, alcohol, and sexual health. Shane's own journey with addiction has given rise to his ability to speak candidly on these topics. Navigating his own personal journey of coming out as a gay man, Shane has relied upon his close community for support on his own journey and has had to answer the basic questions of, am I good enough? Do I belong? And am I loved? So yeah. welcome to the show um, and the podcast, Shane. I'm, I'm very excited to speak with you about your experience, your story, what you've learned and what resilience means to you. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm um, very super, well, I'm super excited to share. Um, so I guess the, um, the question is, what does resilience mean to me? Um, well, I have a I have a number of different uh, takes on resilience. Um, there's there's three three or four different um, areas that that I, I like to um, like talk about in terms of resilience, um, and that is um, physical. So your physical well being, building resilience around you know health and well being. Um, from a physical point of view. So that could be, you know, a number of, um, you know, things like um, gym, um, outdoor activity, um, uh, you know, Pilates, you know. Exercises. Exercise, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, um, and, you know, eating well. Um, so that, that builds a basis. Um, and then there's, you know, mental health or emotional well-being um, yeah. in, in resilience, which is which is a lot of my story. Yeah. Um, and then there's spiritual resilience. Um, well, yeah, tell me what that means to you. That's interesting. Spiritual resilience is, for me, is um, this constant, I guess, um, question around faith and fear. Um, do I have faith not just in, um, you know, in the universe or in my spiritual well-being, but do I have faith in myself and yeah. my own and my own confidence? Yeah. Um, and where does fear actually stop us? Yeah. Um, and you know, it's a sneaky little thing. It's 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 a really sneaky little thing. You know, like um, um, when an opportunity arises, for instance, do I say yes or do I do I do I go back into that that fear? Am I good enough? Is the question, and yeah. and so that that to me is very important as well. Yeah, that narrative in our heads it, it's always very flippant. It, it can go one of two ways: where we're really believing in ourselves, or we're not, and how we can control that reaction. Um, is key to feeling resilient, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's 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 the reaction. You've you've ab absolutely nailed it. Like I've I've just got a, a little note, a, a few notes here, just around um, the reaction. And and you know we go into autopilot when we don't even know we're going into autopilot. And and if we give ourselves space around those um, decisions and. <laughs> Seriously, it's it's the small stuff. It really is the small stuff um, around um, you know taking the next the next. I call it the next organic step. Yeah, what does that mean? So what I mean by that is, um, 
in 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 my past i've pushed too hard i've yeah. pushed to really get stuff done and race around and and that's coming from intellect isn't it not intuition absolutely absolutely and so if 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 we have a, a space around that reaction and for me a lot of the time i haven't known i've been in reaction so yes. it's it's it, it's kind of oh i'm doing this i know i'm doing it but i really don't I, 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 there's no space there. My, and when we do give space, up. we always make a different decision, don't we? If we give it time and space and we sit with something, something rises up from the gut that tells us when we're really open to connecting to our gut feeling, yeah, actually, that is a really good idea or, oh, that sounded really good at the time, but no, actually, it's not. Yeah. And yeah. tapping into that would be very um, important for We've got our physical and mental health, but also for making business decisions too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, ab, ab, you've nailed it. Um, and creating that space is where resilience for me sits very, very strongly because my, my reaction um, and building resilience around not reacting. Yeah. Not reacting. I love that. That's yeah. so not reacting. So let's talk about your um, entrepreneurial abilities for a minute. Do you mind if I share how, you know, we, we met on Chapel Street at one of your businesses. You've got a beautiful plant shop in Windsor. And what's the name of your plant shop? J'adore Botanic. That's right. And I love your plant shop. My house is filled with your plants. Yeah. Um, and, and we met because we're locals. Both our businesses are on Chapel Street. Mm -hmm. Um, and how long have you been in the plant business for and, and, and when did you start your coaching? Okay. Um, so in my current business, um, I've been doing that for three years, three, about three and a half years. Yep. Um, and I have had, um, other businesses, not in, in plants. I've had other nurseries before, yeah. um, but I have a design background as well. So what we do in, um, at Jador Botanic is we, we create a, um, a feeling for people, you know, it's not just selling a plant, um, as opposed to creating an, an environment, a soothing environment. Um, the ambiance. Both, the ambiance. Mm. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm. Um, both in businesses and also offices and also at home. Wonderful. So, very, very important. Yeah. Yeah, for, for the mindset. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And, you know, you've been through so much in your life, which I imagine led you to wanting to help others with your wonderful coaching business as well. Mm -hmm. Shall we move into um, you sharing a story with us of something you've been through that helped you to discover your own inner resilience? Yeah. Um, so there's a number of stories that I could, um, I could draw from um as most people do have you know when 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 you know life takes you on a journey um and one of one of the stories that i i i kind of have that's been really uh present for me just just recently was um when i was about 35 um i had gone through so being a, a being kind of an introvert growing up, you know, the shy boy, um, <clears throat> moving to many different schools, having to really fit in. So the the not belonging for me really was a very, very powerful um, belief. Yeah. Um, and so when I came out as being, you know, um, gay and, you know, my se sexual preferences were um, for men, um, it was it was like, oh, I kind of felt relieved, but the relief was short lived because then there's a whole nother space to 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 feel like I, I have to belong or I have to kind of fit in, if you like. And yeah, so that was your journey of perhaps of individualizing 
from being shy and in the group in the tribal stage you know where we connect with our tribe and it's all about you know the group around us and learning from our family and our friends and trying to fit in and then you discovering who you are as an individual and having the courage to rise up and say hey I'm gay and I'm proud of that but then you still have to learn to become that version of yourself that is comfortable with what you've just stated her ab- absolutely and and in that space is 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 a new learning is is and and you know this is where resilience is when you commit to something yeah. um you know as profound as your sexuality it it kind of like oh wow you know like i kind of feel comfortable in who i am but now i still have to f- kind of find my tribe or find my groove because even in 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 that community, there's you know lots of different pockets around, yeah. um, you know where do I fit in and you know where are the like-minded people. Um, being a business person and not having, um, you know, my sexuality of at top of mind. You know, I believe that you know we're human beings first and foremost, regardless of sexuality, regardless of color, all of those things. Oh. Let's just all kind of get along. Um, yep. A very naive way of thinking, I know, but um, again, that there's this, um, you know, oh, you know, I found, I found. Let's go out and have fun, and 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 let's just be happy. Yeah. But even in that space, there's, there's these, you know, different yeah. um, beliefs, and so. Pause. I'm going to cut this out. My doorbell just rang, and I'm going to oh. cut this bit out. Sorry. I'm cool. Honest. The posty. <laughs> oh, Eva. Oh. Thank you. No worries. Lovely. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Oh. Do you know what? I had a premonition that that was going to happen. I don't know why. I was like, you know what? The, the doorbell's going to ring and you're going to have to cut it out. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> amazing but it's so easy i've got my editor and i'll just go cut all right we're back back again (laughs) yeah go on so you were saying yeah so when i was when i i'd gone through the process of coming out and you know the whole party scene and all of that and then when i was 35 um thereabouts i became hiv positive and yeah and Um, that was like a huge wake up call to me around, you know, health and well-being and and taking responsibility. And so there was a whole conversation around that, um, for myself and, um, how can I, the main conversation was, okay, this has happened. How can I give back? How can I make this into a positive and you had to pause and react. Pause and react. Mm. Yeah, rather than go into the whole, oh no, you know, um, this is this is terrible. I'm not sure what to do. And that and- victim mentality of why did it happen to me instead of for me? How did you flip that? So I found um, again, I found a community um, that. Um, was it was act, it's actually called uh, Living uh, Positive Victoria, and they are an advocacy um, nonprofit ad- advocacy um, <clears throat> you know organization to yeah. de- to deliver you know um, to deliver programs information um, to the community. Right. And so I started. I started doing that, um, work with uh, those guys, and um, and that's how I developed my speaking career in terms of going into schools and talking about sexual health and talking about drugs and alcohol. Because typically, sometimes they're they're kind of linked. We become very vulnerable. We we let our inhibitions down. Um, obviously, when we're out, you know, drinking. Yeah you know make make sometimes poor decisions yeah and decision making wow you're an amazing amazing man because it takes a lot of courage to share personal 
personal, personal stories like that. But I imagine that is what transformed how you felt about yourself and how you felt about it and what happened is, you know, coming out of that, it happened to me, to it happened for me because then that led you to giving back. How did it feel sharing that with the kids? Like initially it would have been really frightening, but then how was it actually when you delivered those speeches? So it was really rewarding because, um, you know, when you have a 16-year-old male come up to you um, after a talk and, you know, they're grappling, they're, they're kind of going through the process of um, their own journey around sexuality. And, you know, it wasn't necessarily all about um, the negative stuff. It was sometimes actually allowing somebody that potentially doesn't have a vehicle to talk about this stuff um, to, to have a conversation and, 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 and be given permission that they're okay if they're having questions around their own sexuality. I mean, this was, this was 15 years ago. We've, we've moved a long way. Well, we kind of pretend that we've moved a long way, um, but there's still an awful lot of, you know, stigma and peer pressure um, that, that creates a, a, you know, like a combustion bubble. Um, you think that's from lack of education and just old beliefs being passed on from parents to kids and lack of education. Um, I think, I, I think, I think, yes, absolutely. But I think it goes deeper than that. Yeah. I th- I think education sometimes, um, you know, we we say education in terms of oh, you're going to school and getting an education, um, but there's there's real time education. There's having those real conversations um, that that enable people to have to to be vulnerable in in a safe space. Now, with the pressures of of society. Um, we'll call it, we'll go broad. Um, those conversations that are desperately needed are not having not being had. So it's it's more about it's it it is about education and saying, okay, you're okay, but it's more about uh, enabling people or you know young people to have a voice around what's going on for them in 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 a real way yeah Um, yeah yeah and how do we do that how do we do that for kids how do we do that for adults in the real world how do we advocate for them to feel enabled to have a voice wow that's an that's a 10 million dollar (laughs) question what do you think though just in a little snapshot like what do you think okay so i'll give in my little snapshot what I when I was when I was coaching, I was I, I coached um, you know adolescents around precisely the the, the topic around um, building resilience to say no, for instance, and what how how I kind of likened myself in that space was like a really cool uncle, yeah, and and so how we how we you know go go through the process of of creating these this safe space or is to be having real conversations on the ground and saying you know what it's okay if you fuck up rather than telling people that this is bad that's bad you know everything's bad but we know with statistics you know research has told us um where 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 our adolescents are going in terms of you know if I if I fall off the wagon or if I kind of want to try something we're going to do it illicitly or behind people's back which then creates um, an, an environment of shame guilt which then you know manifests into other things so absolutely absolutely yeah yeah no this is so important Shane because what I imagine is you wanting to help kids to develop their resilience to say no and helping them to still stay connected and nourishing themselves even if they feel like they've made a mistake is what is going to change all of this. Was that your experience in 
um, like what was the lowest point and the hardest part about learning about your HIV diagnosis? Was that from feeling that way yourself? Absolutely. So a really great example, and, and I think this goes to um, the point around education. Um, when I was diagnosed, the doctor had said to me, um, now it's like with most medical conditions, it's very personalised and not only are we going through a physical journey in terms of you know medication and what works, what doesn't work, we're yeah. also going through an emotional journey. Yeah. As as you know, as most people do when they have um uh, something of a you know a medical crisis. Um and so what the doctor had said to me is well you know in a 15 minute slot, you know, because that's what doctors have and you know I take my hat off to doctors, they do an amazing job. Um, and there are other vehicles to have, you know, more broader conversations. But he said to me, oh, you can go home and Google it, Google what, what, what it's all about. Mm. Now, in that space, I don't know if you've Googled anything lately, but um, just going back to plant care and, you know, in any subject, there is hundreds and hundreds of different opinions yeah. about any topic. Yeah, exactly. So it's, you know, and, and you know, I can educate myself around, you know, the, the physical nature or, you know, the medical, you know, um, kind of aspects of it. But how it's impacting me is becomes even more confusing. Absolutely. And overwhelming, way too much information. You're already overwhelmed and you've gone to a doctor to seek his professional opinion, his or her professional opinion. And yeah, the 15 minute slot doesn't really allow for that. I know some GPs that um, don't stop there and they will get you back in again. And um, and then some that, that, that just don't. So yeah, that's, that's critical. So you're, you're, that was the start of your lowest point. You got diagnosed and then you didn't feel supported in understanding what that meant for you physically and emotionally. And therefore the hope that you would need to feel an experience to create that healing environment for you, for your mind and body to work through this diagnosis. So uh, yes. Yeah. Um, a, a process, but also coupled with that, Amanda, that I would I would really like to touch on is that you know we we hear around nurturing and um, healing and self care and you know all of those all of those things that we know we should be doing for ourselves. However, if you don't have a platform of what that actually means. So, you know, um, what does self-care look like or nurturing look like to me? Yeah. Now, is it, you know, having a huge community around me, checking in on me, or is it me being in isolation or, you know, what actually, and, and, and I think, I think that's, that's a part of the puzzle piece around building resilience for oneself is finding out what works for you. Yeah. And it's diff again it's different for everybody. It's absolutely true. And 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 we go through the process like coming to you um you know several months ago and going through the pro process of kinesiology um has been a phenomenal experience for me simply because um one of those, you know, the topic around self-care and, and, and nurturing is, well, you know, I am nurturing myself. I, I am kind of, I think I'm nurturing myself because I'm working really hard and I'm sleeping well, and but that's actually not what I needed. What I needed was somebody like yourself to come in and, and, and start to shift my energy. And to me, I didn't know that before. And yeah. so... And, and so now I understand, having gone through the process, that it's really important to me to have my energy in my whole body, not just my head, calm. Yeah, and then, then you can go deeper and then you can get to the cause. Absolutely. Which Absolutely. is not, not fun sometimes and <laughs> quite turbulent at times. Uh, not, 
it's not for the faint hearted. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it. It's it worth every worth it. single part of it. Because when you come through the other side, um, when being assisted to dive deeper, face your dragons, your inner, inner fears, um, things that make you feel uncomfortable, you overcome them. And then when you overcome them, you change what you think and how you feel and therefore what you're believing. And that's what shifts biochemistry into one of healing and growth and repair instead of inflammation, degeneration, more that survival stress response. Mm. Yeah, and that's essentially what we're doing at, when we're doing kinesiology. Thank you for sharing that. That's beautiful. Yeah. So your turning point from your lowest point is knowing what self-care means to you and understanding what works for you because it's different for everybody. What else? So also, um, you know, shifting beliefs, like you've just touched on it now. Um, you know, our beliefs and our values run us regardless of what we, you know, think. And, you know, if we believe that, um, if, you know, for me personally, I came to a point of saying to myself, my life is not working for me. This was 15 years ago. And so um, coming to that point was the first, was the first realisation. So my life is not that when you were diagnosed. That was when I was diagnosed. Yeah, fifteen yeah. years ago. Yeah. And then, and then, so coming to that, coming to that realization, you know, um, and then looking at other, you know, always looking around and going, oh, you know, I, I, I'm a people pleaser, so I go, oh wow, you know, why can't I, what. Why can't I be like that? Or why can't I, you know, and having all of those questions, all of those, all of those crazy little beliefs that I've had have all diminished, but it was, it was packed on. It was mm -hmm. packed on like clay. And so the chipping away over the last 15 years to come to the point of going, you know what? I'm okay. I'm okay. And what what is self-care to me is personal to me. And what is self-care to you is personal to you based on your set of circumstances. And that's really okay. Yeah. And, and so, you know, going through the process of, of trialing and error, you know, trying different things, you know, around self-care in business, it's not dissimilar to business. We're always testing and measuring and finding out, oh, wow, that, that could work or that could work. Everything's kind of an experiment. At the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, bringing it back to resilience is having the resilience around those experiments and not being too hard on yourself when the experiment pot potentially doesn't work. That's really important too. Yeah. How to be kind to ourselves um, as we navigate through difficult things it's, it is, is part of that softness of resilience, the intimacy aspect, because it's usually thought of as strong and grit, move forward despite anything and overcome and move forward in this masculine force, but it's very feminine as well. And it's very, you know, how much do we, can we love ourselves in our narrative, in the story that we tell ourselves in, in how we, you know, nurture ourselves when, when the going gets tough as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, that you know, the, the, the feminine, the feminine energy, um, you know, particularly, you know, um, I've struggled with, with both feminine and masculine role models um, and, you know, the nurturing that you're talking about and 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 this and and you know the kindness i think i think that's the word actually kindness the, the kindness that that um is is generated for self through through the process um is is something that had been foreign to me yes yes because, because... i've been bored yeah, i've been brought up with the you know, rah, 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 you just got to keep going and, you know, there's no feelings and, you know, but that's actually not who I am. I'm, I'm in fact, very far away from that person. Yeah, even though some of the things we learned growing up from the closest people around us 
um, can be vastly different to the people that we become as we grow as adults. And that requires that inner resilience, knowing what's right for you and what to walk towards, and then knowing when things aren't right for you and walking away, to me, is like the um, major parts of resilience. And we have to be strong, but we have to be soft as well to stay connected and anchored to have that flexible mindset to do those things. So what's the, how is your life better now having overcome that? My life. Um, <laughs> I'm karma. I'm my life, okay, um, my life has many different aspects, but the number one thing that 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 has has been generated out of the this process of healing and the process that I've been on is I have I have a sense of self now. Mm. Um, that that is unflappable. Now, what I mean by unflappable is that I I really do believe in myself um, in such a way that I'd never felt before. I can't kind of um, put a tangible measurement on it, only that I know that where I was before, even six months ago or 12 months ago, um, is very different to where I am right now. How does that change your life when that inner self-belief is so strong? The inner self-belief is so strong is I think I think what's been replaced more, I call it a pendulum, um, is faith over fear, that the faith I have in myself um is is now the pendulum has swung very much in the opposite direction around um having faith in myself that I'm okay that I'm safe yeah um my my ability take away all of the material you know bits and pieces of of life yeah friends the whole thing if I was to be removed from my life, I have a sense of resolve inside that is, um, you know, I, I have faith in my ability to connect. I have faith in my ability to make money. I have faith in my ability to show kindness and love and compassion. Um, yeah. I have faith to know that I, I, I have the ability to empathize um, with another human being. Mm. That, that was not present. This journey has given me those things. Wonderful, um, wonderful. And it's an internal thing. It's an inside job. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Because I think when we're young and we don't have those feelings of safety and self-belief yet, we want to escape. We want to escape those difficult and painful emotions of overwhelm. And that's what causes us to have excessive fun and perhaps what leads into situations where we don't know how to say no and so I think all of this work is about yeah learning how to return back to ourselves in that calmness in that inner anchor of self-belief so that we can still strive to do big things and make mistakes and discover who we are but it, that continual journey of returning back to ourselves I guess is why I created the program at Ben Like Bamboo is, okay, well, how do I do that? Well, we'll do this at the start of the day, create this mindset. And throughout the day, there's tools on how to catch yourself to come back and return. And then evening rituals, how have you found them? The, the tools that I taught you, were they useful? Because I love asking my clients that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, the exercise is really great. Um, the um, snapping of the band. Yeah. yeah, catching catching yourself, having a having a yeah. physical reminder um, yeah. that you know again it takes time because when you're in a thought, 
for, for me, when I'm in a thought, it's it's kind of like takes you off on a on a, mm-hmm. on a on a tangent, and then you know you suddenly in a in a space, um, and it's the resilience around. Okay, it's just a thought. Yeah. It's, it's just a thought. Knowing how to get out of our heads, yeah, and and tap into our intuition, which is why meditation is so important. Just five minutes a day, five minutes a day, you know, longer if you can, but every day, just some return back to yourself. So before we wrap up, Shane, do you have any further lessons that you learned that you would like to share or any tips at all to anyone listening today? I know so many people are going to get so much out of this podcast. Um, yeah, I do. Turn up every day. Mm-hmm. just turn up to life every day love that some da- yeah some days you won't want to and that's okay yeah turn up to life every day that's 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 one yep um because every i believe i believe that um the process once you start the process that the process is something that you have to surrender to yeah. yeah. Um, and you you know, so turn up every day. Surrender is a really big one. And build the resilience. Test test yourself around resilience. You know, we all have urges, we all have um, you know, idiosyncrasies. We, you know, um, but test yourself and don't test yourself to say no to those those behaviors that you know keep you stuck and incrementally things change things change when the, when momentum is behind it things change i absolutely do yeah totally absolutely when you make the decision that this is what what i want for my life i yeah. want calm i want peace i want some kind of resolve in self that no one else can fuck with. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and it's this it's the small things that you do on, on personally for yourself, as opposed to showing the world. That that's where the real power is for me. Um, that's so true. That you show yourself. I'm writing this down. It's so important because um, I'm going to write a blog about this. And this is really important, Shane. So personal things that you show yourself equals the strongest and you know little things that you can do to to build that inner resilience which is going to be different for everybody is you could have really cold showers you can start jogging and pushing yourself a little bit extra in a run or just anything that pushes you it could be um yeah really cold showers is a good one yeah because it can you prove to yourself every day that you can stretch yourself yeah, and then the more the more wins you get on those on that level, personally, the more resilient you become over yeah. a period of time. Like, you know, I know it's it's a cliche, but it doesn't happen overnight. It certainly hasn't happened for me overnight, you know. And I've been um, I've been quite fierce around understanding why I do the things that I do. Yeah. Uh, um, and then changing the behavior and 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 for me it's also not and this is another big one it's also not beating yourself up yeah yep being and that's that goes to what you were mentioning earlier about the kindness Um, be kind yeah be kind to yourself be kind to yourself as you would you know your pet or you know um a friend yeah Oh, beautiful, Shane. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and sharing your wonderful story. So many people listening out there, I'm sure will relate. And it's very empowering for you to be vulnerable and to share um, your experience and, and all the things you've learned. I think you're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. And it's been an absolute um, yeah, pleasure. Thank Thank you, Shane. So I'm going to write a blog about this and this is going to be on the podcast as well and all of Shane's links so you can find him. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you again, Shane. Thank you, everyone. Hey, 
Thanks for listening to the Ben Like Bamboo podcast. Please rate and share the episode with your community or anyone you think may need to hear this episode. If you would like any help with maximizing well-being and flexibility in your life personally, you can see me one-on-one at the private practice in Melbourne or on Zoom if you are not local. You can book in or find more info at benlikebamboo.com. If you would like help remotely, I have a resilience program you can do as an online course with six ebooks and videos on mind, body, food, connection that include resilience and tools that can help you to feel happier and healthier after rebuilding from change, stress or illness. If you would like help with boosting resilience and wellness in the workplace, you can book in for a free Zoom discovery chat. The Ben Like Bamboo at Work program can be delivered in person or virtually. And if you would like to inquire about Ben Like Bamboo at school, you can find information on all these programs on my website, amandacampbell.com.au. And you can contact me on email, amanda at benlikebamboo.com. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. And remember that flexibility builds resilience. And no matter what you are going through, you can overcome it and discover what you are made of. See you at the next session.